Today, we're gonna to share our top 20 tips for not only surviving a craft show, but thriving at a craft show, before, during, and after. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it, or make it? So do we. We have new videos each week. This week, we're giving up our top 20 pro tips for craft shows. Tip number one, research the craft show. We start every craft show by researching the show. We need to know how many people are gonna be there and who is gonna be there. That's right, we use a couple of websites to help us with that. We use festivalnet.com, we use Sunshine Artist. They'll give you more information about the show, tell you a little bit about the show, the number of expected attendants, how many people are gonna be there. But another important factor is the demographic. So you want to know what kinds of people are going to be there. There'll be different different graphics at different shows. So if you're doing a local farmer's market versus a well-established craft show, you might get different types of shoppers and you might adjust your products to match the shoppers. Not every show is created equal. We started at our local farmer's market, which I think was only farmer's market in name. There was a lot of handmade goods there. But there was a farmer's market down in the city that had 10 times the people that would attend. So we figured 10 times the people, 10 times the profit. We set up our booth. We were in for a three-month commitment. And those people were not looking for handcrafted items. They were there to shop for their, their actual vegetables, their actual things that come from a farmer. The mushroom lady next to us killed it. We didn't do so well. We did a lot better at our local market. Another great reference is to reach out to the organizer themselves. If you're not familiar with the show, you can reach out with the organizer and ask them a little bit about the expected attendance and the demographic and who's going to be at the show. They have all of that information, and they're happy to share that. Tip number two, have a well-organized craft booth. When you first set up your craft booth, if you're new to craft shows, you'll want to do a mock setup before you ever get to a show and make sure that you know what that shopping experience is going to be like and how the layout should work in your booth. One of the big things that I learned from a vendor next to us, uh, she shared she really loved our product and she had been doing this for 20 years and she said, I love your product. My biggest advice to you is to make sure that you put your product front and center in your booth. So one of the things that we did to adjust our booth layout after hearing this advice was make sure that we had standards right at the intro of our booth. So right at the entrance, we have one on either side with th door hangers hanging right there. So as folks walk by, they can just look over and touch it, feel it, see it. They can see the quality without ever actually having to step into the booth and commit to the booth. And do a mock setup. Like she said, we set ours up at first in our living room when we first started. We did it in our garage. We did it in the yard. We've also done it out here in the parking lot at the shop. Kim has set it up and actually done fake purchases. She <laughs> set up the whole booth, would do a walkthrough, has other people come do walkthroughs. I had to do a walkthrough and buy a sign myself. <laughs> Tip number three, pricing strategies. Don't price yourself out. That's right. You'll... Sometimes when you'll go to a craft show, you'll see other people selling similar products and you're worried that you might not sell your product if your pricing is a little bit higher than someone else's pricing. Don't feel like you have to reduce your price to match others. You'll want to make sure that you set your price to match the materials, time, expenses, everything that went into making this sign and then adding a profit for yourself. And then when you get there, even if show if the show is slow or if you see other prices lower than yours, don't be tempted to reduce your price. You set your price and then if you don't do so well at this particular show, then you'll adjust your product or you'll adjust the quantity and volume that you bring to match the show next time. Which leads right into tip number four, have a variety of products, but not a, a mishmash of products. There's a difference between variety of products and a mishmash of products. <laughs> You're gonna want a good, better, best. These will hit your different price points. So for us, we do things like door rounds, that, which are like 16 inch at $55. We do door corners, which are in the similar style. They have a similar theme but they're at about $25. And then we'll also do small ornaments using the same type of theme. 
or another take on a theme if you do want to bring a variety of items maybe stick with a theme to your booth one of the things that i passed by one of the booths a, a year or so ago that i loved was a gaming booth someone had it was a, mainly a dungeons and dragons theme but they had so many items related to dungeons and dragons i mean things or, i wouldn't even think about they even had like cutting boards boxes dice towers they had everything that they could put in their laser and make with their laser but it stuck within that same dungeons and dragons theme that's right it was it was a really cool little booth and they had varying items at varying price ranges but again all with that same theme tip number five bring engaging signage so we always bring a banner that we hang with our business name on it but one of the other things that we bring that turned out to be a great little item this was garrett's idea is a retractable stander and we actually have two of them one of them has a little bit about us so it has a picture of us a little bit about who we are the fact that our business is veteran owned woman owned a little bit about how we make our products some of the materials that we use and then a qr code that has our social links to our socials and links to our website so that you can follow us or purchase from us outside of the craft show and you'd be surprised how much how much action that that signage gets especially that qr code um they're always secretly scanning that qr code <laughs> before they come into the booth well a lot of times you'll see them step in and say just immediately greet us and say oh who's the veteran so you can tell that they have read the information mm -hmm. outside on the little sander and i'll see them standing there reading it and then they'll just because they've learned a little bit about us, we'll step in and then maybe ask a question about the product or look around. It does a great job of marketing our business for us without us having to engage the customer immediately. I'll get to you engaging your customers. You do want to greet them, but they'll learn a little bit about you before they ever step in. The second standard that we bring has a little bit more about other products that we offer. So I can't bring every sign to every show. I may be in a particular season, let's say I'm in spring, but my stander has a little bit of every season on there. So some of our spring signs, some of our Halloween, our holiday or Christmas signs. It's all of our best sellers, really. Yeah, all of our best sellers are on that retractable stander and then folks can see oh oh you have um i smell children oh i love that one and that'll encourage them to go to our website and purchase a sign maybe for other seasons we also have the qr code on that stander so that they can link to our website and get more information now i really pull that one out on a sunday when our when our um, inventory is low <laughs> and, and i want them to be able to see hey look we have more than just this uh, sparse stuff that's up here right now. Which leads us right into tip number six. You should always have an inventory checklist. <laughs> that's right. Before we go to every show, I make sure I create a full inventory checklist for this particular show. I mark off. I pretty much have every sign that we offer on this. And then I highlight which ones we're actually bringing. It actually is a... It actually is a checklist that starts as yeah. soon as she signs up for the, the craft show, the checklist starts. And the checklist gets handed to me so that I can make all of the cuts and I check off that box. Then it goes out to painting where it gets checked off on all those boxes. And then it goes to Bowtown where it gets checked off and yep. then it actually makes it into the wagon. So I'll know how many of each sign that I have brought to the show. So as I sell items and people are looking for more, I'll know what's left in the carts and what inventory I still have with me. Uh, I'll also be able to estimate how much product I have and sales expected, and then I'll mark them off as I sell them, and then I'll know how many items I have sold so that I can do a little profit and loss at the end. <laughs> Tip number seven, get your sales pitch down. We always have a particular little sales pitch that we give as folks come into our booth, mainly because you want to share a little more about your product. You want to be excited about your product, and then you want to share why that you think that this is a great product. So we always share that these are handcrafted items, that the materials that they're made of, that they're made of wood, that they're quarter inch, that they're durable. That they're high grade MDF. That yes. we use not your ordinary craft paint. This is your outdoor house paint. It's the same <laughs> stuff that you paint your house with, 
but with poppy colors. So it still has those UV and weather resistant properties. That's Can part Can you of tell our that spiel. Kim has pounded that into me? <laughs> a good point. You know, I'm going to go back to the signage. Something I left out under the signage is a third signage item that we use. Oh, that's right. That, because you said not your average craft paint, that made me think. We also recently added uh, vertical standard toppers. So at the top of each one of our little verticals where we're displaying our door hangers, we have a little sign that gives a little more information about the material. So we'll say um, the one says not your average craft paint and then below it it says this is outdoor rated house paint so it is UV resistant weather resistant it's also part of our spiel but they can read that right up there and yeah we don't have to get to them to let them know all of the facts about the the items that we're selling there's a little bit about each sign that's up there and they can gather from all the signage our spiel. But I, they actually read those things. So when we first, again, just like the standards, when Garrett recommended the vertical standard toppers, I was like, no one's actually going to read those. But they do. They they'll do. stand there, and, they'll, and I'll see them reading them. And as a matter of fact, my funny story with that one is I was, sitting, I was just sitting there, and she looked at her friend. There were two women standing there read, looking at the signs, and she said, these are not painted with your average craft paint. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite was a lady asked me she's like and will these hold up out and will these hold up outdoors and the husband nudged her and pointed at the sign and he goes yeah they're not painted with your average craft paint <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good one that is a great if you're using uh door, if you're selling door hangers and you're using uh your foxy used brand paints that's a great sales item uh and information to share is that this is not your average craft paint and they're always like oh Ooh, not average craft not paint your average craft paint so give them a little more information and definitely let them know that these are handcrafted items and you make them and how you make them when you make them you just share information about your product it helps sells it a little bit more tip number eight have change or an alternate way to accept payments of course, you're going to want to make sure that you have a way to make change and make sure you have enough change. Uh, this is a lesson learned. I always have a money box with me, but I may or may not have um, the right amount of change in my money box. We sell $55 signs, so I'm always needing $5 bills. And I can't tell you how many times I've been to a craft show. I've learned my lesson now where I have plenty of 20s and 10s, but guess what? I can't make change for a five. And so your vendors next to you are great about making change for you, but you'll want to make sure that you know the price of your item and what your change is going to look like. Do you need a lot of ones? Do you need a lot of fives? And then, of course, you're going to need a few 20s and 10s to break those big dollar bills. But you'll also want to make sure that you have a way to accept credit card payments. So Square is a popular one. Our website is Shopify, and we use Shopify Point of Sale. So we can accept credit cards through some an item that looks like a Square. But we'll take it right out of uh, our... At, right out of Shopify. Right yeah. out of our POS <laughs> system. And, you know, sometimes at those craft shows, there's a lot of vendors. The network gets jammed up, and it'll take a lot of time for those... Uh, payments to process so we also have a qr code that they can use to use a venmo paypal oh there's a couple of others that we have cash app yep. cash app mm -hmm. so if the network gets jammed up with shopify or with um square they are, a qr code is always a go-to we, we find that more and more people like using the qr code payments mm -hmm. yep tip number nine dress appropriately and by that, we mean match your booth. So you want to make sure that you're dressed professionally. But another great thing to do or think about is if you're making a handcrafted item, kind of go along with your handcrafted. Like aesthetic. Yes, like aesthetic Kim, is a Kim great Kim likes word. to wear her... Um... Her schmuck, what do you call that thing? It's just an apron. Your apron. <laughs> <laughs> because I am doing some painting and things at the booth, so it looks like I'm handcrafting my item. If you're selling a lot of jewelry, you'll want to make sure that you're wearing your jewelry that you're selling. You'll want to match the aesthetic of your booth. You'll and, and then during the holidays, I yeah. like to spice it up and kind of dress holiday themed. So I'll wear the ugly sweater 
Or I'll even put a Santa hat over top of this hat. Right. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> but that's the enthusiasm. Again, you always want to be enthusiastic. You want to be excited about the show. You want to be excited about your product. And if you're at a holiday show, be excited about that type of show. That's the event of the show. So you want to dress for that show. So during those Christmas shows, yes, you'll wear your Christmas earrings. You'll wear your little Santa hat. Those items that match the theme of the show. Tip number 10, make friends and do some networking. Oh, yes. Network with vendors. This is one of my top tips. Uh, Garrett already has given me a hard time about it. And we and I do this a lot. I love lot. to walk around. And, well, I mean, I love craft shows. She's so, a social butterfly. Yes. I love to walk around. I love to shop. But while I'm walking around and shopping, I'm also networking with other vendors, learning about their product, learning about the shows that they attend. Uh, just, Bartering. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she likes to barter, too. Yeah, well, that's right. When I say shop, I don't really necessarily mean I'm buying anything. I like to do trades. I don't know if you've been to craft shows before as a vendor. What we found is that other vendors do like to trade. So folks will come up to me and say, oh, I love this. Do you trade? And I will Kim's always like, say yeah, yes. Kim's always down for a trade. <laughs> and then I'll walk into booths. I'll walk around and look and I'll say, oh, you know, we sell door hangers. Do you trade? And so that's another way that you could shop shows. And it's a good way to make connections and meet new people. Well, um, those connections can be so valuable. They'll tell you about the good shows, how much they've made at shows, hidden shows, uh, tips and tricks about our booth and moving in and moving out. I mean, the other vendors are a wealth of information. They've already learned some lessons, and they're always happy to share. Yeah, they are. And and I just, yeah, I enjoy networking at the shows. You do. <laughs> you do. Tip number 11. Have your promotional materials, business cards, things like that. Right. So... Number one, you're going to want to make sure you, at a minimum, have a business card. People will always ask for them and want the information, not only just so that they can take it home and know who you are after the show, but sometimes they'll want your business card so they'll remember to come back by. Maybe your booth is busy and they grab a card so they can come back by and look at your booth when it isn't so busy. So it's great to have business cards right there on the register when they check out, but also consider having business cards at the front of your booth. Uh, we will sometimes use um, zip ties to zip tie a little business card holder right at the front of our booth so as they walk by, they can grab one and, and keep their our information for themselves. And on our business card, we have a picture of the product that they'll see at our booth so that they'll know where Always it came have from. a picture of your product on your business card so they'll know what you were selling. And then not just business cards, but sometimes postcards. We use a postcard that's got a little coupon code on there that I'll throw in bags or encourage people to take because it has a little 10% off on there. It says, thank you, 10. And I let them know if you're not going to purchase now, you might want to purchase later. This will cover some of the shipping costs, so you don't yeah. have to worry about that. And then sometimes if I'm at a local show close to home, I will make sure that we bring our little workshop brochures so folks know that we have workshops and we're just around the corner here. And this is information about the workshops, the cost, how to register for a workshop. So that's another item. If you're close by and you want to just give information about workshops, then bring a little brochure as well. We also have a little stamp that we put on the back of each of our signs so if they do lose all of our promotional materials, they still have a QR code on the back of their sign so they could still find us. Yeah, takes them right to our link tree and they can have all of our information. Link tree is a great way to put all of your socials in one place, your Instagram, your Facebook, your TikTok, your website, all of the information and so that they can find everything out about you. And it's by putting that stamp on the back of the the sign we either will use a stamp or we'll just do Engrave a little, a little card mm -hmm. sometimes we'll glue a little eighth inch qr code that we have that has our business name on it the engraved qr code and it just looks really professional if you glue that on the back and then they can always find us again you will always want to brand your items so folks can find you again tip number 12 transportation loading in and loading out this is actually my number one tip my number one tip is have everything on wheels or everything can yes. get on wheels. <laughs> that is it. And my, my tip inside that tip is this hand truck right here is a three-in-one and it is worth every penny 
because loading in might be easy, but loading out, there's been plenty of times that we've had to take everything all the way out to the, the parking, parking lot. lot. Right. And yeah. So it gets a little crazy with all the vendors trying to leave at one time. So sometimes you can't pull right up to the dock and load your stuff into your truck like you unloaded it. Sometimes you just can't get there. So we may have to load everything from the booth all the way out to the parking lot to our trailer and get everything out there, maybe through gravel, maybe through grass. So you're going to want to make sure everything is on wheels. And I'll tell you, I agree this dolly has been worth it because it is convertible. Not only can we put our standers on there when we have it in the 45 position, uh, you can lift something heavy when it's in the dolly position, but the fact that you can lay it down flat and make it a cart, if you have tubs and containers, mm -hmm. you can stack those on there and wheel everything out. It was um, it was definitely one of our best purchases <laughs> for craft shows. I love that. But if I forget that when we head to a craft show, I, I don't You'll know what back. I would do. I would, would go, go back. back and get it. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, I know you've heard us mention the wagons before. We have, again, we sell door rounds at our craft shows, and we transport our door rounds in these collapsible wagons. And the great thing about them is the fact that they are collapsible. They're canvas. So as we come in with maybe nine wagons on a big show full of 20 signs each, as we break down or hang inventory, sell inventory, we can collapse wagons, put them inside a wagon, take it back out to the truck and clear, clean up space in our booth, have more room to walk around and just easily transport items. <laughs> Tip number 13, <laughs> hidden storage. It's always good to have a place to hide some extra inventory. If you're inside, a lot of the times they'll have a place where you can store inventory. But if you're not inside and there isn't a place to store it, there's a lot of running back and forth to the trailer. Mm -hmm. So we've been able to hide some storage behind our standers and underneath our table. So we use a four foot table, a collapsible table, but it stands countertop height. So it's a little bit higher. You don't want folks bending over and trying to check out at a lower, um, I don't know. I always don't want to bend over. No, yeah. Uh, shoppers don't want to bend over, so you don't want a low table. If you can elevate that table, uh, if your table has the extended legs, you can set it at countertop height. If it doesn't have those extended legs, let's say you're using one of those foldable six-foot tables, you can get those little bed risers and set your table up on a bed riser and make it a countertop height table. But you'll also want to get a tablecloth that matches that. So one of the places we'll get branded tablecloths. They also have just designs. So you can get them in a brick. It can look like shiplap wood. Um, it could look like old old planks. Yes. There's a lot of cool designs at stackdisplays.com. That's where we get ours. But it's long enough so that I can hide a wagon under that table. So I can ha hide 20 signs under there in a wagon. And like Garrett said, for the standers, uh, we pull them out just a little bit so that I have enough room that I can park wagons behind the standers. No one's going back there. The back of them is open. So not only will I put wagons back there, I'll also hang extra inventory on the back of our standers so that I can just grab them from the back and bring it around to the front. You'll just want a place to have extra inventory without taking up space in your booth. Or getting in the way. Yeah, I guess that's taking up space. Which leads us to tip number 14, utilize your vertical space. So when you're new, you may not have a lot of standards. You may not have a lot of money to invest in display products. But over time, you'll want to use that vertical space. So even if you're just using one table, you don't want to lay everything flat on a table. Make sure that you have some way to display your signs uh, vertically or any of your product vertically. Put shelves onto the tables. We actually use standers now, so we, we've actually gone through several iterations yeah, <laughs> of ways to display our signs. We made standers in the beginning, which were great with um, 
what, um, out of those pickets. Fence pickets, yeah. yeah. With fence pickets. It looked really nice. Yeah, I love them. And they were super durable, durable, but they were very heavy. And they just were hard to move around and carry with us to the shows. We moved on to the metal racking, which is also <laughs> great. And I do recommend it. But over time, uh, it was just heavy and it pinched my fingers. It will take a finger off in a second if you don't pay attention. <laughs> Every time I used it, it pinched my fingers and I got frustrated with it. So now we actually use our pegboard vertical standers, which we make ourselves, but those are light enough and they keep the signs vertical enough so that when folks come into your booth, they're looking right at the door hangers or they're looking right at eye level at your product. So that's a great way to display products so that people can look at them, touch and feel them without having to look down and, and have them crowded onto a table. Tip number 15, have a touch-up kit or a way to fix your products. We, again, we sell the door hangers. So we sometimes, as we transport them, the signs will bang up against each other during travel time and they may lose little pieces uh, or the paint may get scratched. So we make sure that in our little uh, travel touch-up kit that we have sanding sticks so I can maybe sand off scratched paint I have a set of little one ounce packages of every color that we have so that I can use some sponges and I can dab and touch up the paint. Um, a lot of times little pieces gets lost. So what do we bring Garrett? We bring our bits and bobbles bag. <laughs> so it's a little bag that has yeah. eyeballs, uh, uh, periods, stars, the dots to eyes. Yes. Just little pieces that we find uh, that's, often get banged, knocked off, or lost, we will make sure that we have those extras in a little bag so that we can touch them up, we can paint them, we can glue them back on, and the sign isn't uh, ruined and unsellable because it's missing one little dot to an eye. I hate having products sit behind me <laughs> where I can't display it and it's I can't damaged. sell it because it's damaged. Yeah. Oh, it eats me up. <laughs> eats me up. <laughs> Tip number 16, show promotion. You want to make sure prior to going to these shows that you let folks know that you're going to be there. And of course, your social media is a great place to do that. You want to maybe on your website, you want a, your full show schedule listed there so folks mm -hmm. can find you anytime. But maybe a week before the show, you want to start promoting this on your social media, like your Facebook, your Instagram. Let folks know that you're going to be here next weekend. Come and see me. If you have email addresses, this is a good time to post an email blast to let people know where you'll be also. Another great way to advertise with that is sharing information potentially about a giveaway. Oh, I'm going to be doing a giveaway at my booth. Come see me here. You could win a sign. And once you're at the show, don't give up on your social medias. Don't just be at the show. You got to let people know that you're at the show. So every morning, I like to do a quick, good morning. Here we are at wherever we are, Virginia. Come see us. And then I'll have Kim say good morning. Yes, it lets them know what, Gary will do a walk around of our booth. They can really see the product that you have with you at this particular show. If there's something that they haven't seen before or something that's new um, or something that they didn't get last time, they'll be able to see that behind you as you walk through and that might entice them to come out and see the show and oh, not only and support you but other vendors. It works. People have come out before and said, hey, I saw you posted where you had that Merry Christmas lights. Mm -hmm. Do you still have one? Mm -hmm. So it works. Mm -hmm. Tip number 17, stay connected through emails, gathering them at the show. Right. So you will do your advertising as we just said, but one of the ways to do that advertising and maybe that email blast is to collect those email addresses right at the show. And it's another way to, when you give a, do a giveaway, you can say, Hey, sign up for our social media and you'll be entered into a drawing to win this particular item. And that's a great way to collect those email addresses so that you can market to these folks again, not only at a show in the future or maybe a show next year, year but you can mark it throughout the year hey you know maybe they bought something at your christmas show when springtime comes you let them know 
hey, do you remember me? You found me at this show and I'm offering these spring items now. Do you need a new spring door decor? And you can keep in touch with them throughout the year. Well, that's a good backup plan also. If you have a strong email list and your show gets rained out, we know a show gets rained out. (laughs) There is nothing like throwing out an email blast saying show rained out, having a rained out sale. And that will usually pull in some money. Maybe you won't make as much as you might have if you actually made it to the show. But at least it won't be a total wash. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Collect those email addresses. Tip number 18. (laughs) Have a bathroom buddy or a partner that will help you with the show. (laughs) Garrett's such a big help at the craft shows. <laughs> I do agree with this. You want to make sure that you have a second person with you at the shows, especially if you're at a big holiday show. When you hit these fall and winter shows, you'll want to make sure that you have somebody with you to help you. Uh, when the booth gets busy, sometimes you're checking someone out, you're bagging product. And then but somebody's trying to ask you a question at the same time. Yes. A different customer is asking a question while you're trying to check a customer out. Yeah. yeah. So having a couple of people there working that booth at the same time is great to keep up that good customer service but in addition to that if you need a little break and you need to step away from the booth for a moment maybe you need snacks maybe you need a network with other vendors (laughs) maybe you need a nap (laughs) yeah maybe you need a nap it gives you the opportunity to walk around stretch your legs so we do recommend having a buddy with you plus it makes it a little fun you got somebody to talk to yeah because Everybody knows it dies on Sunday afternoon, Mm -hmm. and it can get really boring. So Mm -hmm. it helps having a buddy that you can talk to, and you can talk about how the week has gone so far. (laughs) (laughs) Something else that we do that we think is pretty funny, and we have some other vendors that do this with us. When things are slow, um, your buddy can be shopping your booth. I will sometimes walk around. Well, I'm often fluffing bows in our booth anyway, but I might be shopping in the booth just so that it looks like someone is actually in the booth. Because if you have one person in your booth, you're going to entice somebody else to step in your booth and do a little shopping if you have two people in there you're going to get two more people in there so and uh, i like to do that to other vendors too if if i know the vendor and i see somebody is walking past slowly but not committing i will go in and be like oh these are so beautiful you made these Mm -hmm. wait these are just how much (laughs) oh man that is such a good price you got to pump up the other vendors help them out Help be their marketing, too, because they, they do it to us. Yes. We do it to them. Yeah. Some of our friends will walk by and say, oh, tell me about this product. Not, your, so, not your average not your average craft paint. Tell yeah. me more about this. <laughs> yeah. And so that just helps other people. They listen up when you, when you share that information. Now they're listening and they oh, well, let me see more about this product. So it's a good way to good draw one. additional people in, too. Tip number 19. This is a good one. Mm -hmm. Don't sleep on this one. Mm -hmm. Do a demonstration or be working on your product. That is a great way to show folks that you do handcraft your items. So you might not have to paint a whole sign while you're at a craft show. You might not have the ability to paint a whole sign while you're at a craft show. But to be touching up, doing a little touch up right there, you might be thinking, oh, let me let me do this, you know, out in the parking lot or in the car before I get in. Yeah. No, you can do the little touch up on those signs right there while you're sitting at your booth. Uh, I've sold multiple, multiple signs <laughs> while I'm doing something touch up or changing a colorway i changed a colorway while i'm changing it people will walk up and they get really close and they'll lean over top and there's been many times that i've sold the sign before i was even done touching it up or fixing it yeah one of our shows we were sitting there and i was telling him you know this one is just not selling and i think it's the colorway i really think if it wasn't painted orange for fall I could sell it as more of an all season sign. So when we get back home, I'm going to change that orange to teal. And I think we, and I think it'll sell better. And he said, well, give it to me because it was just the words on there. He said, give it to me. I think I can change it while I'm sitting here. It was giving him something to do, but also while he was doing that, (laughs) but while he was sitting there, yes, somebody walked up and was like, Oh, what are you doing? 
And he said, oh, I'm just going to change the colorway on this sign. But at that point, he was a good ways through, and you had actually made it start looking like rust, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they were super impressed with the paint technique that he was doing. And they were like, well, is this one going to, is this for sale? And he said, yeah, it's for sale. As soon as I'm and done. she said, yeah, I'll buy it now. Can I just buy it now, walk around and come back and get it? And we were like, absolutely. So yeah, just doing a little demonstration, not only painting signs for us, but sometimes I'll make bow bows making, while yeah. I'm standing there. Yeah. I'll go ahead and do some black and white bows or holiday bows. If I'm just standing around, it's a great way to look like I'm handcrafting something. People get really interested and they're like, wow, look at that bow. You made that so fast. And Kim's so always tinkering with them. something with the signs. Uh, yeah. So it always, always looks like she's busy. Yeah. I'm always doing something. <laughs> Tip number 20, keep track of your sales. Yes. Last but not least, of course, we talked about our inventory list uh, earlier. You'll want to make sure that you keep track of all the items that you've sold. You know what your expenses are and not only the items that you sold, but the expenses at the show. So did you have to stay at a hotel? Uh, Did you have to travel long distances? How much gas did you use in your car? Think of those things because... How many snacks did you have? Did you go out to eat? Well, you, well, if you're staying overnight and you are going out to dinner, that is an expense that you should probably consider because you'll want to make show, sure that the show is worth it, especially if you're having to travel a couple of hours or overnight or stay overnight. You'll want to make sure that you're selling enough product that not only covers the expenses of the product, enough profit for you, but also your travel expenses. So keep track of everything that you've sold, all of your expenses, so you know how much money you truly made at the end of the show. Ooh, I got a great bonus tip. Okay. (laughs) Bring snacks and drinks. Oh, that is a great bonus tip. Because otherwise, you're just stuck with eating the stuff that's there, and it's not always the healthiest. And a man can't live on popcorn and peanuts alone. (laughs) Yeah, Garrett and his peanuts. That's the first thing he buys at every craft show. But over time, you'll want healthier snacks. I mean, at first, we were excited about the French fries. Oh, we're getting French fries. Getting French fries. (laughs) Now I'm like, all I have is Mm. chicken fingers and French fries. Yeah, now we feel like, oh, what's up there? Chicken fingers and French fries. So we try to bring water. We try to bring a cooler. We try to bring some chips or Doritos. Uh, we bring uh, protein shakes. Protein shakes. Some, some fruit. fruit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so we bring our snacks. We bring it in a little cooler. We don't even have to leave our booth unless we want and to. I, you know what? I think bringing those snacks have actually helped cut down on my napping. <laughs> healthier so, snacks. Yeah, my yeah. healthier <laughs> snacks have really cut down on the napping. <laughs> All right, well, we are about out of time. We have to go set up for the craft show. We're still getting ready. We have one next weekend, and it's going to be the biggest one of this this season so far. Yeah, this is our first fall craft show. We're really excited about it. It's an outdoor show. It's fun. We're usually near where the band and the music is playing. Yeah. They have a street dance at night. So. It's a good time. Yeah. So we thought this video was timely. It has a lot of the tips and tricks that we use and have lessons learned that we've gained over the past, what is it? Six years. Six years of craft Mm -hmm. shows. So hopefully you found this information helpful. And if you have a tip or a trick that we haven't mentioned, we would love to gather any tips and tricks that we have for craft shows. Leave it in the comment down below. If you've heard it, but you want to expand on that too, let us know what you do differently at a craft show. Otherwise, I am about out of time. We got to get going. But a big thanks to all of our patrons. We love you guys. And that is the best way to support this channel. And we will see you on Tuesday for a Test Cut Tuesday. And next Friday for another video. Step five. Nope. Make sure you... What? Tip number oh, five. Yeah. They'd still get that same type of personalized feel. Letting them know that I'm not just a salesperson. I'm the real crafter. And these are my wares. <laughs> We're not using the word wares. Let's just throw it. Tip number 12. Transportation, load in and load out. This is actually now my number two. This is actually my number one. Your, the yours with number one was... Yeah, I keep wondering why you were saying number two. What's All your right. number one? Ready? <laughs> yeah. And if you're doing an inside show... Sometimes they'll have some 
position one. All right, ready? Yeah, keep your hands down here. Yeah. 